Hey everyone and welcome back to a new tutorial. This is going to start off a new series which is going to be pip install fill in the blank. This is exciting because I get to do deep dive into people's code bases, repositories, or packages that will allow you to have new tools in your arsenal to build and innovate online. And I'm going to condense it to give you the most bang for your buck and try to uh, make it really professional. So with that I'd like to start off and jump into Dash as I really do love this framework specifically as there are a lot of benefits in building out your front end with dash as it's actually a react front end using you know json to speak through python and it just allows this really dynamic way to create and innovate so with that i want to dive into what was a old video that uh, got pretty popular on my channel which is uh, dash bootstrap components we're going to take it to that next level in this video it has been a while so we are going to do it justice and there's nobody who can explain this better than Anne Marie. Anne Marie is somebody that has been contributing to the Dash community for some time now. She is the co-author of the book of Dash and as you can see at her GitHub, she contributes a lot of value to this ecosystem and I'm very grateful to have her in the Plotly community and I would consider her a friend. And with that, uh, let's dive into what is Dash Bootstrap Templates. So Anna Marie has set up this amazing um, application that's hosted to give you a real quick bird's eye view of what do you get out of this and what is being brought to the table. So right here is her website, uh, Dash Bootstrap Theme Explorer. And what you can do is you have this way to toggle uh, different themes, real fast, quick, easy, and you can get an idea of what am I trying to build here, you know, and how will it look if I design with this styling and is this what you're really trying to go for? Not only that, but she's implemented ways uh, to cycle and to change from, you know, a dark mode to a light mode, you know, and we're going to explore this a little bit more in depth as we dive into some of the code. But all I wanted to do was just give you a quick example of what is really going on here. And there is nothing better of explaining this than just going to her website, which I will include in the links down below. So you can go through these different themes. Uh, she talks about, you know, an app gallery that you can kind of get an idea of, you know, what each one of these will look like in this styling. I really like this like retro, like pencil, you know, version. I think that this is really unique and it is what will set you apart from everybody else just using a basic template that is provided via, you know, dash bootstrap components. Use a theme, you know, take it just that extra notch and it isn't that hard to do. And I'm about to show you that. So with this, I'm going to dive into what is her GitHub. I will include this in the links down below. She has done a really amazing job articulating the project through the GitHub itself and through creating an app to represent the GitHub, which is you know needed in this day and age to uh, you know be a professional developer. So. With that, I'm going to dive into her actual project. One of the really great things about GitHub right now is they have introduced code spaces. And if you go to any specific repository, you are allotted two you know code spaces that you can quickly bring up and you can you know maintain them by just deleting a code space and reintroducing it in the new repository so this allows me to view the code as it was and i can create changes i can update it and i can interact with it and host it directly on you know github's machine rather than using my own processing and it's just an amazing tool so if you haven't heard of GitHub uh, and you haven't heard of code spaces, at least that you know newer side of it, I would highly recommend looking into it because it has completely changed my development perspective and how I really go about interacting with some of these projects. So with this, I have what is uh, the code space. This is what it looks like. You can change the theme if you really want, but all you really need to do is in the terminal, you run a pip install dash bootstrap components. That is all that is needed for this. And with that, you can also install Python. I think if you go into the Explorer, it usually asks you automatically like, hey, I can read this project. I can see it's built in Python. You wanna install Python real quick? Just say yes. And with that, you're all set, ready to go. So all I'm doing is I'm just clicking on one of these and I'm right clicking and I'm going to run in file and terminal. And what I get brought up to is this right here. 
So this is a really good example of showing two things. Uh, one is the themes. So you can go over here and you can change the theme. And as you can see, it jumped into a different theme. I jumped into Cyborg. I jumped into Style. The other thing is that you need to understand in Dash is that it's compartmentalized and everything is compartmentalized. And that's one thing that I really love about Dash as a language and as a framework. So when you are talking about styling, you need to talk about styling the overall application, but then you also need to talk about styling the individual figures represented in your application because they can all be styled in their own specific way, which allows a lot of, you know, creativity and a lot of ways where you can, you know, get your hands dirty and to create new value and just trying to articulate what is your message. So with this, we have an ability to change the template of these graphs. As you can see, if I jump into Seaborn, it's going to change them all to be white. If I go into presentation, it's going to change them all into a little bit larger. Uh, you know, you can go off grid, X off grid, you know, you could go into a different, you know, variety of ways of just, you know, showing what is this information. So with this, I'm going to dive into the repository a little bit and I'm going to kind of talk about it. Uh, this right here is the demo theme, uh, change for graphs. And what is happening here is we can see that the majority of the imports are related to Dash. And we have down below a new import that is related to Dash Bootstrap templates. This is really where the magic is coming from in Anne Marie's project. And what she's trying to articulate is the ease of use of being able to change the styling of this project and of projects that you're working on real simple. So we are bringing in a theme changer IO component and then templates from URL is the other one that we're bringing in. What is really going on over here is we have the initial start. So this app is basically the initial bringing up the application and how would you like it initially styled. What we are doing here is we have this external style sheets. This is referring to the Dash Bootstrap components, the one that you, she is initially trying to bring in, which is just regular Bootstrap. If we scroll down, we can see that we have figure templates. This is referring to different uh, styling that you could bring into the graph side of things. And what we are doing is we are creating a variable that says change template, which is referring to this theme changer IO component, which is up here that's being brought in. Now, this is dynamic. As we can see, we have an ID, an AIO ID, which is related to theme. And we are adding this radio props, which creates this value that is related to the initial one that we're trying to bring into the project. And then we have button props. So with this, uh, we have the change figure, another variable that's related to a div. And we could see that if we look at this, it also has an ID of template so that we can refer to what we're actually trying to change. Uh, outside of that, the sources aren't mattering too much. But this is where the real magic is coming from, is we have this function that is related to the different graphs. So we bring in the template in regards to the graphs. And all we are saying is in this function, whenever it is called, we want to change this template to be represented in the templates variable of this function so that it will update. So if we scroll down, we can see that we have an app.callback. This is really what made me fall in love with Dash and why I prefer it over most other languages is because it's real simple to understand the input and the output and how this all works. And the way that this app callback is structured is you have inputs that you can bring into what is a callback and it will return an output depending on the way these inputs are changed in the application live. So what we are doing is we are referring to the toggle, which is that theme radio. And if we scroll back up, we could see that that was up here when we were referring to this templates is one and theme is the other one, which is up here on the theme changer. So it's referring to this ID and it's referring to this ID as here in regards to some of these inputs. So what is happening is, is it's taking it, it's putting in the function and it's checking it via what is inside of these parentheses and it's bringing it into the project. So we are creating a new variable that is equal to the URL of the new theme if theme is changed. Else we're gonna refer back to the basic theme that we have already set up. And we are returning make figure, which is that function here 
this is the make function and we're throwing that template in here to update the individual graphs to represent that template. So this is really cool. Uh, only thing I would give uh, as criticism in regards to this project is I would have changed the ports of each one of these specific examples to be different. That way you can run multiple ports at the same time on your operating system rather than having to manually shut it off and then open up a new one because you can only run an application on a single port at a time. So what I also want to dive into is uh, some of the other features of this repository. And I think a really good example is showing the night versus day and how do I get an interactive template to turn on and off between two different themes. So I'm going to jump into what is the demo of the toggle. Now, for the demo of the toggle, she's done a really good job of articulating, you know, above some notes and examples and just kind of explaining the callbacks and what is going on here. We bring in the initial imports, as you can see right above. We have the dash uh, bootstrap templates where she is referring back to this theme switcher AIO. At the start of the project, you can see that she's giving some variables, some labels. We're going to be cycling through two specific things. We have a sketchy and a darkly. So those are the two things that we're going to try to use to, you know, as a toggle to turn on and off between. And then we are giving URL pass to both of these templates. So with this, we can see that we have that app layout again, and that external style sheet is coming back up. And we have just one of these URL themes up here being referenced to be thrown in to the external style sheet. And that's just the initial starting point of the application, but we have a dynamic way of changing it later on. So with this, we can see that we have a header, uh, we have buttons, these buttons don't go anywhere. Uh, we have a graph, the graph has an ID, so that's probably gonna be interactive. Uh, we also have an app layout, and in that app layout, we can see that we have a theme switcher AIO. So this is where we're sitting, and I'm going to continue to scroll down, and we can see the, our last bit of information, which is our app callback. So for less than 100 lines of code, we are expecting something to be an interactive way for us to switch in between on and off uh, different themes. So I'm going to run this by just going right clicking on it and running it in the workspace. Talking about this app callback, we can see that the graph is represented as the output and the input is that theme switcher ID and we are referring to the theme. So that is right here and it's taking the value, which the value is represented as toggle in what is this function. And it's referring to this variable where it is saying uh, a simple if then statement, if theme one, if toggled, then return theme two. And we are returning a bar graph that is represented through a theme that is being brought up through the variable that we created right above. So let's jump into this and I'm gonna run into the ports and I'm going to open this in the browser. And this is what we're brought up to. So if we toggle this, we can see that it changes styling from a light to a dark. Now, the other thing that I wanna to bring to your attention is as you can tell back to how this application works is we have two different components of this application. It takes a little bit of time for this update because we are first displaying to the initial application, we want this styling. Then whenever we switch, as you can tell, it takes a second, but it's telling the graph through that callback now we want to update the graph. So that's really what's going on here. And if I dive back into the project, I have one more example that I'd like to bring to your attention before we close out the video. And I'm just trying to keep this real simple and real short. So with everything we have here, this is just an amazing repository to dive into if you are interested in styling your components. The last thing that I wanna to bring to your attention is going to be the default versus the template. And this is a very interesting one because I wanna show you how everything in Dash has the availability of being styled and you can change anything you know, through force or you can use what is other people's packages like this one in a simple way to create value. So for this project, we can see that we have the imports right above. Uh, down below, we have the initial theme, which is Vapor. We're using a URL for that theme, and that is being brought in through the external style sheets. We are loading figure template, which is this template theme up above. So this is just matching Vapor. This is matching Vapor here. 
going down we can see that for the most part this stuff really doesn't entail too much we can tell that we have an app layout this id is giving us two charts so they are broken up and between two different divs that are the width of half of the page because an lg of six and an lg of six means that you are creating a column of six and six and you can only have a column of 12 on a specific row and that's the way that bootstrap works so with this we have an id of layout container and we can see that we have a callback that's going to indicate the way that we want to style this project. So I'm going to just go over here and I'm going to run this. And I think that this is going to give you a little bit more insight into what I'm talking about. Here we go. We can see that on the left hand side, this is the one styled with the theme that was selected by Anne Marie. And on the right hand side, we can see that this is just a base styling for Plotly. So we can tell the differences between the two. And on the lower side, we could see that we can update the graph via just the different, you know, options that are presented available uh, just through selecting, you know, different ways that we want to present it. And if I dive back into the project, uh, we can see that this is referring to the app callback once again, where we have the three indicators, which are the inputs, uh, the, con the contents and the slide of the year. So that is just these three different um, components of the application that allow the user to interact with the overall you know, scheme and to change things. Um, up above, depending on what is you know, toggled, changed or whatever, it will update the two graphs to be the same. So the only main difference in regards to how they are styled is we have uh, just a template of Plotly, which is just the base styling, where above is being styled by what was created above in this vapor styling. So with this uh, load figure template, this is really what is changing the styling of the graph itself. So this is where it gets interesting, is if you are trying to just change any graph, it is a available to update it in any way that you would like if I want to make the second graph look like the first graph and it's not going to be you know directly the same but if I want to just remove the white space just to show an example of how to style one of these graphs I can go in here and I created this little bit of code right here which should do us justice this is just basically referring to figure two and I'm adding a dot update layout and within this, you can add a bunch of different parameters to change the title. You can change the background. You can change the foreground. You can, you know, alter it in any way that you would like with CSS. And all I'm doing is, is I'm referring to the paper background color and the plot background color, which are variables presented in the up layout. And I can change it to RGBA 0000. And all that is saying is make it transparent. So with this, if I rerun this application, I'm going to press control C and that's gonna close it off. And if I right click and run one more time in the terminal, we will see what we get out of it. There we are. It might not pass for a seeing eye exam, but it is a starting point. Just to show you how you can start to alter and change these graphs to make them you know, fit your needs of any individual project, you can brute force it just like that. So with this, I would like to close by giving a shout out to the book of Dash because that's the book that Anne-Marie co-authored and I'd highly recommend checking it out as it is currently on discount and the offer ends, well, tomorrow. So make your move now. <laughs> with that, Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, congratulations for Anne-Marie uh, creating such an amazing repository and just producing awesome you know, work and value in what is the Plotly ecosystem. And I'm excited to continue exploring other people's packages and projects. And if you have anything that you recommend, let me know. And with that, uh, subscribe so you can keep up to date. And I will see you guys in the next video.